Welcome to Frontline News from the University of Maryland School of Medicine News Center. I'm Larry Roberts. Coming up, diagnosing the death of an historical figure. But first, a new spike in COVID cases is prompting concern around the country. In Maryland, hospitalizations remain low, but the positivity rate is now above 6%. Highly transmissible Omicron subvariants are to blame. Because these subvariants can continue to evolve and uh, become more transmissible, maybe even uh, evade our vaccines even more and our therapies even more. So I think that this is something that we continue to watch for, especially as we enter into looking into what the fall and winter will look like. While the Omicron subvariants are just as dangerous, doctors are seeing fewer cases of severe illness. I think we have the benefit now of a lot of people getting vaccinated, having therapies, having uh, clinicians recognize the infection earlier on so that they can get treatment earlier and I think that that's all helping as well. New antiviral medications to treat COVID are also helping a lot, especially for older people and those who are immunocompromised. Paxlovid is one of these oral antivirals that has been highly effective. And so I think that uh, we want awareness that these antivirals are widely available now. Dr. Chen says if you test positive for COVID, you should see your doctor immediately and ask about antiviral medication. In our discovery segment, traces of viral DNA from an animal virus were detected in the donor organ used for the historic pig heart xenotransplant. Extensive tests conducted before the transplant showed no sign of virus in the pig. The virus in its dormant form is very hard to detect. But highly sensitive tests conducted after the surgery detected the presence of DNA particles associated with a porcine virus. There was no evidence of infection, and based on tests performed so far, the virus was without clinical significance. There is no indication that the animal virus caused the patient's death or disease in the donor heart. The patient's autopsy tissue does not suggest the spleen or lung or kidneys or liver have any evidence of this virus. So it doesn't look like the virus became something of a threat to the patient, even though he was so immune suppressed. So far, we have no evidence that this virus caused any pathological changes in the heart. I, I would consider this experiment a, a huge success because, you know, going into this uh, transplant, we did not know whether this heart will survive even one day because it has never been done before. Dr. Mohiuddin says in the future, special and specific viral tests will be used to screen for even dormant viruses. The 2022 University of Maryland School of Medicine Gala was held online May 7th. The presentation highlighted the school's exciting accomplishments and paid tribute to the 16 years of leadership of Dean Reese. State and university leaders, faculty, staff, and students honored Dean Reese in a special video about his legacy, which includes the building of Health Sciences Research Facility 3. But Al went about it, about it systematically, hiring great faculty, providing them with the support they needed, and slowly but surely our research ranking rose and rose and rose, and here we are in the top 10 among public uh, medical schools. It's just a remarkable uh, accomplishment. You can view the entire gala presentation online on the School of Medicine website. Islamic philosopher and scientist Avicenna was the subject of this year's Historical Clinical Pathological Conference at Davidge Hall. The conference is devoted to the modern medical diagnosis of disorders that affected prominent historical figures. Doctors determined that Avicenna died of lead poisoning, which often afflicted the affluent during the Middle Ages. The CPC is held during the annual Medical Alumni Association reunion. Finally, healthcare providers were invited to a special poetry reading at the University of Maryland Medical Center. This is the first annual poetry fest, and the first of many, and we're going to talk about poetry. We're going to show what we feel and what we think. How I believe those travel forums with their prolific comments. We gathered healthcare providers just to have an opportunity to connect with each other, especially after the monstrous events of COVID took so many patients away from us. I think it's an opportunity 
to express ourselves and uh, start the process of healing. And that's Frontline News. I'm Larry Roberts. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again in two weeks.